Hi, this is the primary drawing lesson for the first week of Marathon Public Library's summer art program, and I'm glad you've come to join me. This week we are going to focus on lines, organic shapes, and details. We're going to take our imaginations to a flowery meadow and look closely for bugs. So join me as we do that. So this week for the primary drawing, we are going to uh, be focusing on line and we are also going to be focusing on shape. We already know that lines create shapes. I wanna start for just a few moments and more specifically talk about the two types of shapes. We have the geometric shapes that we've all learned here at school, um, squares, rectangles, the rhombus, the circle. These are going to be shapes that have, for the most part, straight edges or straight lines. But look at the second grouping of shapes. These shapes can be found in nature. These are called organic shapes. And the organic shapes really don't have much um, of a straight edge at all. Even if there seems to be a straight area, it has curves, um, it flows, it looks like it's fluid. Um, these are shapes that you can find in nature around you. We're going to be using many different types of organic shapes for our drawing lesson this week. The first thing I would like for you to do is to have a piece of paper. It could be a scrap piece of paper. Um, and I want you just to start drawing some um, maybe lines, loosen up your hand a little bit, maybe straight line, maybe a dotted line, maybe a wavy line, a curly Q line. And now let's move on to maybe some shapes. Maybe let's try the more geometric. And now let's try to move on to maybe more of the organic shapes, the shapes that are more flowy, movable, fluid. Just moving your pencil around, seeing what it can do with those curves and waves. Maybe you want to try a specific, maybe you want to try a teardrop or a water droplet. Um, maybe you want to try something that's similar to a half moon. So just take a few moments and practice drawing some shapes. You've taken some time to practice your lines and your shapes. Hopefully you did some organic shapes as well as some geometric shapes. And now I want you to sit and think about um, meadows. A meadow is basically a field that is covered with grasses and maybe wild natural flowers. So when you are thinking about flowers, think about uh, the different kind of flowers maybe you've seen before. Think about the way that you could use your geometric shapes along with your organic shapes to create some ideas of maybe what you would see in a meadow. Maybe you're going to go back and add some lines to 
that flower that you would see in a meadow. Think about the different flowers you know or have seen. Maybe you've seen some of these flowers in um, at the Gage Gardens. Maybe you've been to other parks, bot botanical gardens, where you've seen a flower that you thought was beautiful. And just take some time to sketch some different flowers. Maybe this is something that um, does not maybe come easy for you. Maybe you have a hard time with imagining what different flowers or plants could look like. Um, this is a time maybe where you're copying some of the things that I'm doing, or maybe you are looking at some pictures of real flowers, um, the different types of flowers in the world around us. Just using your imagination. And all the while using your organic and geometric shapes, using different types of lines, lines that curve, lines that are dotted lines that are zigzag. Take a few moments to draw some flowers that you enjoy looking at. Now that we've taken some time to draw flowers, um, once again, maybe you have looked at some flowers in books that you have. Maybe you went online to look at a specific type of flower. Maybe you're just drawing from your imagination. Maybe you are drawing the type of flower that you would love to see in a meadow, um, a field filled with um, flowers and grasses. So now we're going to take our flower ideas and, um, and we're going to transfer them to our paper that we're going to work on this week. So this week we're going to be using a rectangular piece of paper and we're gonna create our meadow. Our flowers are gonna be large. They're going to be up close. It's almost like we are right in the middle of these flowers. Maybe we're sitting right next to them down in the deep grasses. And I'm gonna start by choosing some of the flowers that I want to focus on. I really don't think that there's any way I could get all of these flowers that I just sketched onto this paper. So I'm just gonna choose maybe um, four to five and um, leave the extra maybe for another time that I'm creating. The top part is going to be the area where maybe the sky is Maybe we're looking at the flowers and then in the distance we can see some blue sky. Or maybe this week you're wanting to draw the flowers all right here next to you like you are surrounded by them. So on this rectangular piece of paper we're going to draw our flowers large. Sometimes that's hard for us so it's good that you've practiced and you've tried to draw some of the flower shapes that you like. So I'm going to start with one main flower. This is the flower that I'm going to base my piece on. And this is the perfect time for you to practice your different shapes and your different types of lines. If you're 
pencil is wobbly as you're drawing, that's okay, just erase and try again. You're giving yourself a pencil outline. What would happen if you were doing this with crayons? What if you messed up and you were drawing with crayons? Would you be able to go back and fix it? Most, with most crayons, no. So we're going to sketch with our pencil first. Drawing the details of the flowers that we would love to see blowing in the breeze. I'm gonna add one more there. So look closely at this piece. You can see that I have some lines and that's just really easy to fix. We're gonna go back with our pencil and erase some of those lines because we don't need to see where our shapes and our lines are maybe overlapping. So I've started large. I have my first flower very large, and then I have another flower that is beside it. And it is, um, because it is beside, it's large as well. I'm going to now add a flower that is going here in the background, beside, and maybe even behind this flower. So I'm going to take a moment and notice that this flower is coming behind my first flower in the front. So I could keep drawing, but I'm just going to have to go back and erase that area. So I'm going to skip where I've already drawn my first main flower, and I'm going to come down here. This is called overlapping. That means that this flower is in front of this flower. And I'm going to continue with my leaves down below. So looking back at my sketch of my flowers, my fun flowers, I'm going to come and bring this piece in. Once again, I'm overlapping. So we've taken a few moments to continue adding to our meadow. I have added this buttercup over to the side and I'm just going to take a few moments to use some of my lines to go back and add some detail. We're going to add color to this piece and so maybe you don't want to add all the details to the different flowers just yet. Um, I know that I wanted to have these um, kind of line decorations on the stem of my buttercup, so I went ahead and did that. But maybe um, you're not sure what colors you're going to use yet on your meadow, and so you want to wait and maybe add some of that color in just a little bit. You can use Crayons. Crayons would be excellent to add color to this piece. You could use markers, you could use color pencils, and today for what we're going to be creating, I'm going to use pastel. 
if you picked up your pieces, um, your supplies for this piece from the library and you did not uh, pick up pastels and you want to come back by and pick those up, I will have little baggies there waiting for you. So let's add some color. So we're ready to add color. I'm using pastel. Pastel is a, another way of saying chalk. Um, my pastels have been used and so they're dirty. I've taken some time to um, clean them and basically by cleaning them off, you just pick it up on a piece of paper and you try to get the film that the rubbing up against other colors has created so that you get that good clean color. I've done that with my colors uh, that I've chosen to add to this piece. Flowers in meadows are brightly colored. We know that flowers are wanting to attract um, insects and bugs. So I'm going to be using bright, fun, vibrant colors to create my flowers. If you were using crayon, it's really, it really doesn't matter where you begin on your piece. If you are using marker, you need to be careful that you're not getting your hand in part of the marker that's still wet. Um, color pencil, you can start wherever you want. If you're using pastel like I am, you need to be careful, not so much at the beginning because there's nothing to smear or to put your hand down on, but as you continue to add your color, you're gonna have to be careful. Maybe you're gonna turn your paper so that your hand is not smearing or smudging, something like that. Also, if you're using pastel like I am, there's gonna be little pieces or residue. So you could brush it off, but sometimes that smears and I personally just take a moment to um, move it with some air. Move on to the middle. Pastel is fun because it's so easy to use and it covers large areas quickly. Maybe the flower that you are coloring, you've seen before. Maybe it's a flower that you saw as you took a walk. Maybe it's a flower that bloomed in your backyard. But maybe the flower is coming from your imagination. Maybe you've never seen this flower before maybe you haven't seen the color combinations of the flower that you're coloring before.
So we have the first um, flower area completed. And now let's work on the stem and the leaf. You can see that your fingers are going to get dirty, especially if you're using marker and pastel. I just keep a paper towel close to me so that I can wipe that up. So I'm going to take a vibrant lime green and as I'm starting to add color to my stems, if we're in a grassy field, a meadow full of flowers, then maybe we need to be careful with the greens we're using. Not all of the greens can be the same or it's just going to all blend in together. So, as you continue, um, think about the different types of greens that you could use or have available to add details. I'm gonna take a darker green to come back and add some lines to my stem area and to my leaf. Take some time and continue adding color to your flowers. Remember, if you are using markers or pastels, try to stay at the top and then work your way down um, so that your hand is not smearing your color. You can also turn your paper to help you. So we're back. We've added color to all of our flowers and our stems. You can go back and um, using a lighter color on a dark color or a dark color on a lighter color, you can go back and add details if you want to your stems, your leaves, Think about the nature patterns that you see in the world around you. Now I'm going to choose a different green than I've used so far, and I'm gonna start filling in the space around and behind my flowers. Remember we talked at the beginning that you could add a blue horizon line in the back if you wanted to, or you could just keep it all green like you are in the midst of flowers in the meadow. Maybe your flowers that you've drawn have taken up that space. So maybe that is not um, an area that you even have room for anything else in. Remember, depending on what you're using, crayon, you're just going to be coloring, color pencil, you're just gonna be coloring. If you have marker, be careful of placing your hand down. And I'm just turning, using my pastel, using my hand, and kind of turning it to get around my different organic shapes that I've created. Coming in between these areas, I uh, am using blue paper. I've provided blue paper for you. Some of you might have chosen the gray paper that I provided for you. Either one is a good background to kind of give some depth or color behind the chalk or the other colors that you're using. White paper would have been fine as well. So it's just really up to you and what you have on hand. If you did not 
pick up all of the supplies from the library. So I'm just going to take some time to fill in the space around the flowers. The flowers would be the positive space. That would be the area that our eye goes to first. And the area that I'm filling in now, what I consider the background area would be the negative space. That's where our eye goes to after it focuses on the flowers. I like how this green that I'm currently using is more of a chartreuse. It's a kind of a pear color, a yellow, yellowish green. I like how it's standing out around some of my other colors that I've used in my meadow. And I'm not really worried about texture right now. I'm just trying to fill in the space with color. We can come back in in just a little bit and add some of our meadow grasses if we want to. Right now I'm just having fun with some of this filling in of my space. I'm gonna take a moment, take care of some of that excess that I have building up. You can see some of my flower, my floral details a little bit better now that I've put this chartreuse green around them. They pop a little bit better now. We've been able to fill this space with color so quickly using the pastel. And it's very easy for anyone to use, which I like. So at this point, I have filled my background with color. And if I wanted to, I could come up here. You can already see what it might look like with the blue. And if you wanted to go ahead and use um, a sky blue, you could come in and add kind of that coloring if that was something that you wanted to do if you're looking off into the distance. If you went ahead and colored all of it green, that's fine. If you used your entire space for flowers, that is also okay. Maybe your first flower was very large and it took up most of that space. So I'm gonna Come back over. This is another reason why I love pastels that you can go back over things that you've already done that you're not so sure about. 
and I made an oopsie over here and I just went over that with a different blue. So now we've had our we have our background of our flower meadow complete and now um, you can leave it like this or you can come back with some of your greens. We have different greens that we've been using that maybe you want to come back and try to add some of that waving grass. That idea that there's a bit of wind we're overlapping, so maybe we don't see the end of that grass blade. Just coming in some of those green areas. I'm just adding some of those blades. Overlapping maybe a little bit because maybe these blades are in front of some of these flowers. Maybe they're in front of some of the blossoms. And then if you are wanting to show some dimension, you can get even a little bit darker with some of your blades. I'm gonna go back over my horizon line a little bit and not make it so perfect in the distance. So we have our flower meadow, our flowers, we have different vibrant bright colors, we have um, our stems and our leaves and then we have our background. Now we're going to take a step and look even more closely at what we might find in a flower garden. We're going to take a moment to look closer um, by looking at details. And I know that most of you have seen one of these before. This is a magnifying glass, and a ma magnifying glass magnifies. So it shows things up close. Whenever we're looking at this piece of string, this yarn, you can actually see the fibers of the yarn. If I put the yarn down and, and we just take a moment to look at my chalky fingers, um, you can see the lines of my my skin, my fingerprints, and you can maybe even see some of the pastel particles that are left on them. So details are things that uh, give us more information, but they're also sometimes an up close um, look at something. If we were to look at an insect, maybe like a ladybug, and we were to look at the details of the ladybug, then we would see an up-close version or an up-close part of that ladybug. We're probably not gonna see the entire part, the entire uh, body of the ladybug. We're just going to be focusing on one specific area that is enlarged in our magnifying glass. That would be the same for any insect or bug that you might find in a grassy or flower meadow. Any part that you are focusing on, maybe the hind part of a praying mantis, 
maybe just um, some of the legs and part of the antennae. Um, let's take a moment to look at this beetle. Maybe you would see the head part with the horn of the beetle. Think about an insect in the world around you that you enjoy looking at and exploring. If you need to look at an insect to have an idea, then there are pictures available for you. Um, you could also use a model that was provided for you. You could choose one of the models. But we're going to take a few moments and we are going to practice sketching the details of the insect you chose. I'm going to use the ladybug as mine. If you mess up and you're drawing with a pencil, just erase and try again. So I have started drawing the ladybug. I have messed up a few times, which is fine, and I'm just gonna take some time to erase those mess ups. I'm sketching lightly in case I do mess up because that makes it easier for me to erase. And I'm just kind of um, having fun looking at the insect that I've chosen and just quickly sketching. We know that there's um, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen of the insect and then the six legs and then the antennae on this type of beetle. Maybe you want to spend time where you are actually drawing all parts of this. That's what the older kids worked on this week. But maybe you just want to do a quick sketch and you're finished. So we are not going to redraw the entire bug. What we're going to do, you've been given a circle. And this circle is going to be placed on a magnifying glass. We are going to magnify 
a bug in a certain spot of your field, your, your flower meadow. And so you need to decide where you're going to place the magnifying glass. Where would you see the bug sitting or crawling? And that will kind of depend on how you draw your bug or how you're placing it on your paper. So I've already sketched my ladybug. And once again, we are magnifying it. We are looking up close. So there's no way that I can see the entire, well, this one for sure, because this is enlarged. But um, this entire example in this small circle. So I'm going to only focus on the top part of my ladybug. remembering when we're drawing that maybe not all of the parts are going to be visible. So if I am magnifying the ladybug, maybe I'm not going to see all the rest of the leg. back and add these details if you're sketching your bag and you have drawn your insect smaller, that's fine. You could show your entire insect. And I'm just going to, even though I can't see it from that view, Go ahead and add that part of the mouth. So now I have my magnified view of my insect. It's going to be sitting somewhere on one of my flowers. I can actually turn it whichever direction I want to depending on how I add my magnifying glass. So now I'm gonna come back with my um, pastels. I'm going to start with my red It's very tempting to sometimes start with black especially if the piece has the majority of that color. Black can be difficult to use sometimes when you're working with pastel. 
not as difficult when you're using crayon and color pencil. going around my darker areas. I didn't cut my magnifying circle out yet because um, I like having an area to hold on to that can get dirty and messy. Um, if you're using crayon and color pencil and marker, that's not going to be a problem. If you're using the chalk pastel, it might smear a little bit. And so you could always ask your loved one to help you with that part. Adding my white. Now I'm going to come and add my bright yellow. And last, I'm going to start with the black. If you used pastel on the flower meadow and you are worried about using pastel for this small um, of a creature or maybe small details, you could switch to crayon. use multiple types of color. And then finally, after you have added the detail or close-up of your insect, then go back with your green 
background color, whichever color you chose, and add that because we know that when we're looking through the magnifying glass, the area around the object that we are looking at can also be seen. And there is your detail close up of your insect. Mine is a ladybug. Now we're going to take our scissors and carefully cut that magnifying glass part out following our line. I still have the area around my circle to turn and so that I'm not having to yet touch. Magnified insect is ready to be placed on the magnifying glass. Take a moment to glue this down. Maybe you need to wait a few moments to let the markers dry. Maybe you have a glue stick and you can glue it down carefully. Um, or maybe you need a little bit of time to let your liquid glue dry. But let's take a moment and glue our magnifying detail down to the um, holder. So our flower meadow is now complete. You can see that on my example, I've gone back and added some black details just to make everything pop a little bit. Um, we have glued our detailed close-up of our insect to the magnifying glass and now we are ready to take the magnifying glass and kind of see where we might want to position it on our flower meadow piece. Where would be a good area to maybe imagine that we are looking up close and spying an insect. So move your magnifying glass around and see where you think the best position is. Maybe you don't want to cover up one of the flowers that you really, really like. So if you like this area, you probably wouldn't want to place your magnifying glass there. Maybe you like the idea that your insect is starting to climb up one of the stems, so maybe you would want to position it like this. Or maybe you see it on the end of one of your plants and you would put it like so. Think about where you would like to place your magnified insect and then add your glue to the back of your magnifying glass and place it where you would like it. I think right there would be good. Hope you've enjoyed drawing with me this week. 
and I can't wait to see you again next week when we come together for painting. <laughs>